My name is John Flett. I'm a pediatrician who helps parents, teachers deal with kids that think and learn differently. You know, every consultation that I have, I often give a kind of a little bit of a word to parents and talk about how their kids are doing at school. It's so important to understand how your child is functioning because when they go to school, which in my opinion is one of the most cost-effective, best value for money interventions you can do for your child early on. And when a child goes to school, it sometimes can unmask some problems. And that is when you become aware that there are issues. And I'd like to talk to you today about some of the warning signs that can be there when your child is struggling at school. It's often an indication that there is a problem. It often tells us to look deeper. It's not normal not to enjoy school. And often parents say, well, you know, I didn't enjoy school. Um, there was a reason, this, that, the next thing. You know, remember, if you had difficulty at school as a parent, perhaps there were issues in your own life and challenges you had. And often the things that I deal with are genetic, so they are transferred to your child. So let's think about some of these problems that can exist. First of all, a child who refuses to go to school, who doesn't want to go to school, that can often be, you know, a separation anxiety initially, but once your child is settled, you know, that often kind of doesn't necessarily mean your child has an anxiety problem. But often the initial problem going to school and separating can indicate anxiety. So think about that as an issue. Often parents don't think about this because they might have anxiety themselves, they're sensitive kids, they often rationalise it in a way that happened, you know, he's an only child or there was some incident that happened at home, you know. So I think these are things that you've got to just think about. If a child makes an easy transition to school, often it's an indication of that emotional regulation that they have. And a child who doesn't want to discuss their school, doesn't want to talk about what happens at school, that, I think, is a warning sign that often indicates that there is an issue. You know, and, um, you know, what I would say is, you know, is there a sudden change in your child's attitude towards school? Is there a kind of a problem that is suddenly cropped up at school, your child is initially enjoying things, then suddenly there's a problem. They become distant, angry towards school. Um, you know, they often uh, find school boring. They kind of come back disinterested, not wanting to communicate. Often a child who has a problem will tell you, they will communicate it, they'll complain about a problem. So, you know, I think that is definitely a warning side that you need to think about. When your child says they are bored, it is very important to look a little bit deeper into the issue. It may be that they already know the material they're being taught, they're well prepared by you at home, and they don't, or they might not really understand the material, and they don't want to complain about it. It is also the same feeling that you have when you're stuck listening to, say, a radio show that is entirely in a language that you've never heard or uh, you know a, a show on TV where the accent is difficult to understand you know it think about it it might be actually the start of a learning difficulty that we are picking up is your child suddenly have difficulty sleeping or eating sleeping and eating is a very strong barometer of your child's health it helps also understand the level of uh, anxiety. Maybe they're overthinking things, worrying about the next day, waking up, having to go to school. Eating. Some children overeat. Sometimes children don't want to eat when they're anxious. So think about that as a issue. Does your child suddenly have to spend so much time on their homework? A big warning sign is if your child is failing to uh, finish the work in a reasonable length of time. A general rule of thumb is that a child should spend about 10 minutes per grade. 
So if they're in grade three, that's half an hour. And if they're having to spend a lot more time and, um, you know, that may indicate that they're having difficulties. Obviously, you've got to think about, you know, are they being given too much work or too little work? And that is something that, um, you know, if you have other children, you'll realize in comparison, comparing the siblings, whether you have a child now suddenly is having difficulty. If it's your first child, of course, it's a lot more difficult. You need to communicate with that teacher, find out from family and friends about whether you think, you know, the amount of time your child is spending on their work is excessive. And be sure that you're familiar with your child's teacher's homework policies. You know, if your child is in f the fifth grade, and has a teacher that believes in giving no more than 15 minutes work uh, at home each night, then uh, your child um, is, and if, and if your child is then spending 50 minutes, then your child is really struggling. And you need to think about why that is. That can often be the sign of an early learning difficulty or concentration problem. When your child has a difficulty at school and your teacher voices a concern, don't feel victimized. Don't feel that you are being sidelined. I have never in 22 years heard that a teacher had victimized a parent or a child, uh, you know, to shame them. If a teacher's got a concern, they really do have a concern. I hear in my own practice, um, parents say, well, you know, it's a young teacher, maybe they don't understand, or it's an old school teacher, they're just being sort of very hard and uh, strict and a bit sort of uh, punitive. That's not really the case. If there is a concern, just listen. Don't be overly sensitive. Make sure that you hear that teacher through. They might be able to bring you in, show you work, show you work compared to other children, how your child is maybe battling behind on things. So if a teacher has a concern, I would say that that is a big warning sign. Sometimes misbehavior at school, in reality, is a way of your child trying to create attention or divert attention from the fact they're struggling with their work. Children and teens who often lack many of the skills necessary to communicate and deal with the problems and regulate social interactions and make friends, deal with emotional difficulties. That is often a sign. Behavior is a secondary symptom of a deeper rooted cause. They often, you know, children after all, they are learning the most important social skills throughout growing up. I often find children that avoid wanting to do sports. You know, let's face it, you know, not everybody is Usain Bolton gonna be a fantastic sports person. But if they're avoiding sports, they don't want to go to the gala. Maybe they've got a weight issue. Maybe they've got anxiety difficulties. They've got, they've got body image difficulties. So that should draw your attention to those things and then try and address those. Talk to the teacher, talk to your child. You know, they often can tell you, you, know, you don't want to necessarily interrogate them, but take some time, let them talk about it. If your child is usually well behaved and then suddenly begins to behave in a way that is out of character. Take a look not only at what is happening in the social world, but also in the academic world as well. You know, finally, if your child is achieving low grades, the obvious reaction is that parents have, maybe they need to work harder. Parents often blame themselves. You know, we should be doing homework differently. Maybe I need to spend more time or often the teacher's blamed. So there are often a lot of reasons for children not getting good grades. And one of the things that I deal with as a pediatrician dealing with ADHD, when you have a child whose intellectual ability is here and they are, they are performing academically here and there's this disconnect, this chronic unexplained underachievement, that can often be explained in terms of ADHD. Learning difficulties we've got to look for, anxiety, mood difficulties, health issues, sleeping difficulties, nutritional difficulties. And children who have social interactions, 
children that are being bullied at school. So there's a multitude of holistic approaches that we need to have. And that's why you need to talk to a doctor, a therapist, the teacher who can look at everything. Not just look at one camera angle, not just look at things in isolation. So, you know, occasionally a poor grade, you know, maybe it's just one term. Maybe there was an illness, your child, you know, a lot of children who are anxious, if they have a very loud class being bullied, the children that are intimidating them, sometimes a teacher who's quite authoritarian, sometimes a child becomes anxious, worried, and of course they're driving on these stress hormones, which almost removes that thinking brain, particularly during tests. So, you know, as a parent, we want to believe that our um, best about our child, and we love them tremendously. Poor grades mean that they're not succeeding. Do not fall into the pattern of denial that low grades are not a problem for your child. Poor grades mean that they are not being successful in completing their work. Be sure to understand all the information that is on the report card. You know, and of course, finally, you know, support both, you know, spouses, you know, mother, father, grandparents, other siblings. Everybody has a role to support and make your child successful. So if those are any things that you recognize, please get and contact me. And also just put a post into the group. If you have any questions, you're worried about why your child is not doing so well, and a lot of parents, it's really confusing because there are lots of different factors. And we often have our own way of looking at it as parents. So I hope that helps you get a bit of insight.